November 9th through 11th. Come see me in Strong Island, baby, where guidos go to mingle at Governor's Comedy Club, November 9th through 11th. Put your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. Well, I'd like to hear about it, potheads. How the fuck you gonna know how to be great if you don't study greatness? Look at the game change. Donuts. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, you're not a bad looking man, Mr. Gals. But you are, Blanche. You are in that chair. There's something wrong with us. Something very, very wrong with us. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. This is Eddie Vedder, and this episode of More Stories is brought, oh, brought to you by Stamps.com. There's no doubt about it that small businesses' op- operations have improved over the years because of technology. All right, that stone on guitar over there. Oh, my! <laughs> that was a special <laughs> request for our guest. Hey, listen, for real, Stamps.com, uh, mailing and shipping? Come on, bro. Bros, ladies, bronies? Moriers and Ultimate Moriers, use Stamps.com. It's a good sponsor. They've helped us a lot. With Stamps.com, you can buy and print official U.S. postage using your own uh, computer and printer, and that's a beautiful thing. Bah. Whenever you guys need it, 24-7. Don't go to the post office. It's a waste of time. It's a hassle. You're going to spit that gum out. They're going to kill you on Twitter, bro. All right. Uh, here, put it right here on the tip right. of my pen. No, but I people go. It? I could not hear it, but people uh, go bananas because people have their headphones on at work right. and they're like, "What was that shit?" Listen, you stamps dot com. Don't go to the post office. It stinks. Are you guys sponsored? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. We're sponsored by flaps on. Uh, we're sponsored by lappers on skateboards. That, That's great. That you, yeah, and Stacey, tracker trucks. That you did not uh, yeah, take that I the time. And didn't get a dime for. All right, look, stamps.com offers more than just uh, a, you know, a meter. It's way cheaper than a meter. Stamps.com customers receive special discounts on mailing and shipping. You can't even get that stuff at the post office. So step off on priority mail, express mail, and more. Look, it's no wonder that Stamps.com customers have already printed over $3 billion, with a B, dollars in postage. We use Stamps.com, Stamps.com <laughs> here at the Fake Mustache Studios. Use my last name, more M-O-H-R, for my special offer, no risk trial. And it's, the, you know what, I don't want to, you know, speak out of school, but it's kind of the same special offer you get from Corolla, same special offer you get from Mark Marin. You can type in WTF. You can type in ACE. But you're listening to this. So type in more, M-O-H-R. I got two dogs to feed. $110 bonus offer. Includes a digital scale and up to $55 free postage. All right, don't wait. Go to stamps.com before you do anything else. (laughs) Click on the microphone at the top of the homepage and mail me a letter and let me know how much you love my ukulele album that you could buy at stamps.com. Type in more, M-O-H-R. That's stamps.com. Enter more. Stacey Peralta is our guest. You can hit him up on Twitter, at Peralta Stacy. You're going to have to really hug that mic. Should I turn off the TV? No, it's good, man. I'm going to turn it off. Unless I put on, I'll put on Step Into Liquid or uh, Endless oh, please Summer. Please don't. Why not? Please don't. <clears throat> I've seen enough. Uh, this is why we, you know, everyone listening to this is probably someplace very cold. And a lot of the places you guys live, and I mean this with all the compassion in the world, shitty. Like, you wish you were somewhere else. And you should. And I mean this with all the love and compassion in my soul and heart. L.A., like, people shit on us a lot, L.A. Dude, all my life, man. And they always say it all with a compliment. Life. Like, what are you going to do? Go be all relaxed and yeah. chill out on the beach? Stacy Peralta. Yeah. yeah, but think about this. We're in a garage right now with the door open, midwinter. Or yeah. not, mid- not midwinter, mid-fall. Uh, it's midwinter everywhere yeah. else. And we have T-shirts on. That's right. And it's nighttime. And the door's open, and it feels beautiful. Stacy Peralta comes in here, and I go, oh, you're in the neighborhood, right? He goes, yeah. And I go, where were you? He goes, I just came back. Tell everybody where you just were, close to the mic. Santa Monica. And but what were you just doing? I was coming from home. I was coming from below the line. You're above the line. 
I'm below the line. I bet your ass. I'm in South Santa Monica, man. But You're you above said, Wilshire. Well, what was your activity today? <clears throat> oh, I went surfing. Went stand-up paddle surfing. Yeah, he goes, I was just stand-up paddle surfing. I go, where? He goes, oh, Santa Monica, just south of the pier. Just yeah, just out. goofing off. Just having fun. I try to do it every day. Try to skateboard every day, too. How old are you? I'm in my mid-50s. 55. So people... Just turned it. Really? Yeah, and I feel as 55? good. Fifty-five. Yeah, I feel as good now as I've ever felt in my life. You look good, Stacy. I work at it, man. Believe me. At Peralta, Stacy, you're it, gonna want to hit this guy up with a lot of more stories, questions. But when people see you on a skateboard, they're probably like, "Look at this guy on a skateboard. Come on, buddy. Really? Aren't you a little nah, old to be doing you, that? They don't know, know that you were in charge of like a gang. I don't know. You know, I still have really good form. I don't do any big things. I just have really good form. It fits. You see me, I, it's really strange. I know people look at me and go, a skateboard, that guy? But you know what? It works, man. It's, it's a lifetime deal. I've been doing it all my life. Uh, Stacy Pralt, of course. The, uh, did you direct Z-Town? Dogtown and Z-Boys? Yes. Sorry. And you, did you write it? I mean, it's, it's weird to say you wrote it because it's a documentary. Wait, wait, the documentary, you, yeah, I wrote it. But you do have to write out the format of how it no, goes. No, you have to. You've got to know what it is. You've got to know what your POV is. But you've got to write out your questions that you write are ultimately what leads to getting the material that you want to tell the story. So when you're writing the questions, you're in a sense writing your narrative because you're hoping the people that you ask these questions to are going to give you your story. So when you were surfing with Heath Ledger, right? Well, that's the feature. Yeah, I know. I was making a joke. Okay. But right for a split second, you had panic in your eyes like, oh, my God, I wandered into the worst interview. (laughs) Wow, he's just like everyone else. No, I prepared myself. (laughs) Believe me. I trained for this. Now, Dogtown, who came up with the name? Uh, I believe it was Craig Stesick. And why was it Z-Boys? Because the Zephyr team. We were the Zephyr skateboard team, so it was just, you know, oh, they're the Z-Boys. I did know that, actually, in hindsight, and I apologize for asking. And it all took place in South Santa Monica, which is just south of here by a couple of miles. Now, I always thought it was Venice for some reason in my mind. Well, it's Venice and Santa Monica and Ocean Park. It's all three. We occupied that whole strip there. Yeah. I love, I, I'm laughing because I love this story. I love the fact that you guys were like a gang, and your territory was the ocean. That's it. Like most gangs are slinging cane, and they're dominating like from this corner to up on that hill well, we to this. We weren't a gang in like the conventional sense of beating no, people no, 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 up no, and but stuff you were like a, that. certainly a crew, and you were a, a family in, in, in what a gang – what I mean is how, how like me and my friends growing up were a gang. And if you came into the neighborhood, it's like, well, you're an interloper. What are you doing here? Right. And you guys were locals the only. Thing Get is, out of though, the water. This we is where were, we surf. We were not baseball players. We were not football players, any of that stuff. We were surfers and skateboarders. And at that time – if you did that, you were so under the radar and so uncool and so antisocial that we had to stick together because no one else did it. And those people that did it were considered, for the most part, um, on the lower fringes of society. Even in Santa Monica? It would seem like Santa Monica would be like a surf, skateboard town. But it wasn't accepted back then, man. This is, this is decades before the age of Kelly Slater. This is when nobody made money surfing. Maybe 10 guys in the world made 10 grand a year surfing. Who made more money, surfers or those Alcapulco cliff diver guys? They seem pretty cool. <laughs> I don't ABC think those guys got anything. Really? They're I think always they on just team. picked those guys out of villages and said, hey, will you dive here? Here's a Speedo. I like your pecs. Hit it. <laughs> those guys are always on like ABC's Wide World of no, Sports. No, man. We had, a dream about being, uh, we had a dream about being professionals at something that was illegal. It was illegal to skateboard. Everywhere it was illegal, and we wanted to be professional at it. We wanted to get paid to ride skateboards, even though everywhere we did it, we were kicked out or arrested. I mean, you gotta you gotta give us credit for something. I mean, it, the oh. audacity of such an, a, a, a ridiculous dream, you know, as that. Well, I, I don't think it's ridiculous, really. Well, it was ridiculous. How could you get? How could you become professional in something that's illegal? It's like it's like. Um, well, in all fairness, and I'm saying this in defense of you and your crew. You, it's something that shouldn't be illegal. It's something that's absurdly of course, illegal. Like, and of those course. old those old bumper stickers, skateboarding is not a crime. And I see it all the time. Like I'll go to the ATM and they'll be like, you know, no skateboarding here in the parking lot. And I always I say to my wife all the time, I go, they can't skateboard here. You can't skateboard at the Seven Eleven. You can't skateboard in the church. I go, well, then you might as well just sit home and smoke dope. Exactly. If you're out there skateboarding, you're not bothering that's anybody. That's exact. That was exactly our premise, man. That's exactly our premise. We're not hurting anybody. We're doing something good. Leave us alone. And if we scratch up your pool, so what? 
You know what the first thing I thought of when I pulled up here today? I looked across the street and I noticed there's a, a, a house being remodeled. First thing that came into my mind was there's probably a pool in that backyard that's empty. At 55 years old. That's my, I'm but trained to do that. Not. I'm trained to do that. When, I, when I'm in a plane flying into the city, the first thing I do when I'm looking out the window is where's the empty pools in the backyards, looking from the jet in the backyards. I, I'm trained to do it. I can't. I'll always do this. And it's not that I'm going to go skateboard them. I just want to see them. You want to know where they I are. I want to know they're there. If you no longer steal cars, you still want to know where the cars are that you can <laughs> boost, right? Like, that's really making a living at doing something illegal. <laughs> Stealing cars. I think you, I yeah, think but that is illegal because you're taking something from somebody else. Well, yeah, but well, you took people's uh, hearts out and stomped on them in all these competitions. <laughs> I love in the do- all the documentaries I've seen of you guys, and also you guys will want to check out bonesbrigade.com. Uh, Peral- at that's Peralta- the new one. Yeah, that's the at new Peralta film. Stacey. Uh, Bones Brigade, of course. If I'm going chronologically, it was you guys just kind of preteens, teens, surfing, Santa Monica, Venice. And then the Zephyr, you guys start uh, uh, skateboarding with Zephyr as like a sponsor, No, what happened was this. We we grew up on the beach in Santa Monica, and we all wanted to be professional surfers. And we got, a handful of us got sponsored by the Zephyr surfboard team, surf surf shop, okay? What happened was, we we were the junior team, me and Tony Alva and Jay Adams. There was a senior surf team. And they were the best surfers on the beach. We were the up-and-coming surfers on the team, okay? As the junior surfers, we were also these amazing skateboarders. But skateboarding wasn't a big deal back then. But one time we had a surf meeting and at the shop, and Tony Alva said, why don't we start a skateboarding team? You got the best skateboarders in town on the surf team. Let's have the Zephyr surf team and the skateboard team. And so it was voted, and we said, okay, we'll do it. And that's how the skateboard team started. But it started as an offshoot of surfing. Right. And what I love watching you guys skateboard in the documentaries, you know, like Dogtown and anytime you guys are mentioned when they show you guys skateboarding is you guys, you skateboarded the way you surfed. It was almost like you were just surfing on cement and it was this completely, it was almost like interpretive dance, like this bizarre to people that were standing up and doing shit on their boards. Like you guys were, I don't know what the, well, how would you explain? I mean, no, no, in our, it, right? in our imaginations, we were surfing. Right. I grew up, when I, wasn't sur- when I wasn't skateboarding with those guys, I would spend hours literally in front of my house that I grew up in in Mar Vista. There was a fence in front of my neighbor's house with a tree that went over the fence, and I would skate that wall, and that wall was Sunset Beach, Hawaii. I would pedal to the corner, and I would hear the announcer during a contest. I'm seven years old, eight years old, and I hear the announcer saying, everybody's been washed in off the beach. There's only one surfer left in the water and the waves are the biggest they've ever been. And I'd sit there and I'd live in this imagination, you know, this world. I'd take off down the sidewalk and I'd hit that wall and there I was taking off down this wave. Did that every single day, hours and hours to the point where neighbors told their kids, do not play with that kid because that kid's going to waste his life skateboarding and I don't want you to play with him because if you do, you're going to get influenced to do the same thing. We should all be so lucky <laughs> to have a neighbor like Stacy Peralta. <laughs> How everyone at this table were like teenage girls, and your Sinatra just walked in. We're all sitting here grinning, like, "Oh man, I no. wish I grew up with you, Stacy no, Peralta." No, no, no. But so what New happened? Jersey is, sucked. So I, you know, I'm growing up in Venice, and Tony Alva and Jay Adams are in Santa Monica, and we start, we meet each other on the beach, and we start skateboarding in the same schools, and and we find that we have like interests, you know. And what what happened was the like shop forming a band. It's the shop like. is the thing that put us all together. The Zephyr shop. The Zephyr shop. It was run by older guys. They took they took us in and they gave us an identity. They said, you know what? We think you're okay. Everyone What's else in thinks it for you the suck. Older guys? To sponsor you guys skateboarding and surfing, like what if I? Well, only... they sold more surfboards. They sold. Yeah, but more... you said yourself, there's only ten people in the in the world really making a living at surfing. And no, no, I just mean what I mean by a living. I mean as a as just an athlete. You could make a living having a shop, right? But you couldn't make a living as a professional surfer. I guess what then. I'm trying to express is those guys had such incredible foresight uh, and took such a long view of it. The guys at the Zephyr shop. Yeah. I mean, they really let this thing play out over, over a decade. Well, they, tr- they, they, tr- they, they, tr- they had these guys had like lightning in a bottle, but they were too young themselves to make it happen. And the second it happened, it exploded. They lost the lightning, and it went elsewhere. How did they lose it? Because they were too young. They were 26, 28 years old, and they really didn't understand how to build a business. When the demand all of a sudden happened, yeah. and they needed capital to expand, it was too much. The pressure was too much, and the whole thing, you know, blew apart. 
No, it's weird because skateboarding did sort of explode right when you guys exploded. You guys were the wave, to use a surf you mm -hmm. know, analogy. Mm -hmm. But when I first saw like Skate Magazine in mm -hmm. New Jersey, for mm -hmm. some reason, it just seemed... And we had this conversation. Were you a skateboarder? I, I, that's how I got to and from school. Yeah. Oh, there's my skateboard. Yeah. Uh, it, it, seem, it didn't seem like it was a new thing in New Jersey when Skate Magazine and Surf Magazine, it all just seemed like it was a part of... California culture? Yeah, it just seemed like, well, that's what they do out there. And right. just finally the magazine got here. And then right. when it wasn't until I saw the documentary, 